you know how I, I see this is when people um, who are younger, potentially, you know, um, coming into the world and then looking at the older generation and going, you guys fucked up our planet. Why should we listen to you? You know, like, look at what's going on with our societies and our um, just <laughs> the, the degradation, right? The, just the blame game. So the thing that I want to remind everybody is that no one person is at fault. In fact, none of us are at fault. Okay, none of us did this. However, our awareness of what we are responsible for within our body, following our decision making strategy, being ourselves, loving ourselves, no matter what, that's what we're responsible for. Now, is it possible to love yourself? For me personally, I recognize that no matter what hell you have gone through or maybe what hell that you have experienced in this life, it is possible to get to that place. Am I certain? No, but I have a feeling. And my feeling is that if everybody on this planet were to recognize that nobody out there is personally responsible for anything that happened to you, that you yourself are a magnet or an attractor for the experiences that you have. You know, and you yourself are a combination of the genetic predispositions and, and flows of energy that was created from birth, from birth and three months before your birth. We have these energies that this is our map. This is our movie. Now we are not that map. When you look down at your body graph now, you are not that. You are so much more. When you're sitting in a group of individuals, you know, you're on the train, you're on a plane, you're, you're at class, you're at work, and you're, there's all these people around you. You are more than just that individual that's sitting there. You're just not aware of it. You're, you're part of a global human cell. And when we get into auras, meaning um, in physical contact, in one-on-one -on -one or one, th one, three to five or larger groups, something changes inside of us. Our chemistry changes, our heartbeat might increase, our you know, flows of energy within our own body. And that is not something that is under your control. And I can remember when I was um, younger, you can see I'm going into stories. <laughs> um, when I was younger, I used to be very, very embarrassed to say 10 years ago, even as, as little as um, maybe five years ago, still in the human design experiment. I can remember being terribly ashamed and angry and upset and bitter and disappointed, all the negative emotions you can think of about what my life was like and what I'd experienced. And only recently have I gotten to that shift of recognizing, hey, wait a minute, I'm a spokesperson of my environment. I'm a product of my environment. Is it my fault that I experienced things that maybe I displayed for the entire group to see? I finally got over that thinking it's my fault and there's something bad and wrong with me. And when you can get to that place where you love yourself, your experiences, the things that have happened in your life for what they brought you as a gift of learning and awareness and potential growth, and you don't blame or shame or guilt your fault or fault yourself or your parents or your friends or your family or your government or your freaking planet that we live in. It's a really freeing experience, a really freeing experience. So my intention with these neutrino news is you can use is <laughs> news you can use is to help explain what's going on in the body graph. I can um, go briefly over the openness now and what might happen if this, then that. But my intention is to help you not only learn to speak the language of human design, not only to be able to practice me speaking it to you, but also to give you a set, you know, habit, perhaps. I have the gate five in a couple of different places where the, it's a ritual, it's a routine, it's a pattern. We're all patterns. And if you can start seeing yourself as a pattern, looking at the pattern from within a pattern, you can see that these patterns are not something that we are under control over. I mean, can you erase any of your gate activations? There's a planet there. It imprinted you. Nope, can't do that. Can you change any of the trajectories of the planets and what they're doing and where they're going and how the global humanity is amplifying and potentially distorting it? No, can't do any of that. What you can do is watch the movie. That's it, with awareness or not but know that you're watching a program, that we are programmed. 
that this program that you live within is not something you can escape from. What you can do is transcend the illusion of Maya that you're so distorted by believing that that is you. And the illusion of Maya is the, the mechanics of the Maya. Human design shows the mechanics of the Maya. It's the mind inside of the head that is, my mind wants to say putrefied. No, that's not a really pretty picture. Um, petrified. The content of your mind and what's going on inside of your head, depending on how you're filtering this energy stream and those transit activations, is going to be dictated by people you're with or the transits. And when you get that from a visceral standpoint, you don't believe in fault and blame and shame and guilt and regret anymore. You don't have to because it's not your fault. Again, the one thing I wish I could scream from the rooftops and have everybody here, but they wouldn't, <laughs> crazy lady, <laughs> it's not your fault. It's still not your fault. Anything that you think, you know, let, think back to the most sensitive, here come the waterworks, the most sensitive relationship that you've ever had. And you can imagine the screaming. I grew up in a house full of screaming, angry people. Imagine that. And me as a personal perspective child thinking that it's my fault that my parents are screaming or it's my fault that my brother got hurt or my sister got whatever, you know always taking and internalizing and thinking that that's your fault. And then being able to, at the end of your human design experiment or whenever it comes to you, that you can really own that none of this is your fault. It's the most beautiful gift in the world. And you can love yourself exactly as you are, flaws, perceived flaws and all, and not care about what anybody else thinks of you. Otherwise I wouldn't be able to do this with you right now, like broadcast to all of my people. And you know, put myself out there because I used to care very deeply. And it's nice to not have a care about what other people think. And it's really freeing. It's really challenging because, hey, anybody with fifth line, and I'm a five on the unconscious on earth, and then I have nine fifth lines in my body graph. There's usually, you know, this, this projection that you put out there and you, you, you tend to have this paranoia or this fear, what are they seeing in me? What do they want from me? I can remember being controlled by that paranoia and that fear. But to align to your decision-making strategy, it takes the weight off of your brain so that you don't have to try and strategize and make a decision. You know what your authority is, where it comes from, what its process is, how it shows up, how it feels. And you can trust that. So that even if your authority says, uh-huh, if you're a sacral generator, it says, uh-huh, you get into something, and your third line, you enter into the right thing to go wrong that helps teach you something profound about the physical and material plane.